Good evening. I'm Rapstein, and here we are with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up. And this is for Monday, the 3rd of April, 2023. Ah, wow. I can't believe how time is flying. Here we are in April already. Interesting time. All right. So today we had a pretty important day in terms of market data. First, I'll go to the bottom. OPEC announces they're going to cut and Russia joins in with uh, announcing they're going to extend their cuts. So in theory, another 1.6 million barrels a day of oil off the market. I use the word in theory. OPEC is notorious for making quotas, making statements, and they don't come true. Yes, Saudi Arabia, if they said 500,000 barrels, I believe them. But then you get to the lower players down the ring and, you know, as they did it and the UAE and Kuwait jumped in, after that it gets, you know, sketchy at best. Iraq's oil looks like uh, that's going to be okay, the 400,000, 500,000 barrels uh, from the north, the Kurd oil. It looks as though there might be a deal there that makes some sense and uh, we'll see what goes on. But I don't think that's coming off the market at this point. But this would be 1.6 million barrels. So let's assume half of what they say is true. Still 800,000 barrels and I think you got to look at that important. Today we got a report on U.S. manufacturing activity. It's the lowest in nearly three years, but we've known that. How many times in the mornings am I starting you off? I'll look at the Richmond Fed, look at the Philly Fed, look, look at what's going on. And we say, I, I keep saying, my friends that are in manufacturing, they're having problems. They see orders slipping down the road as to where they're at. Their books have gotten a bit smaller for what they're doing. So we're seeing that. But the area isn't there that the high interest rates have impacted or the employment questions. That is in the service sector. Now, over the weekend, something did happen that pay, I pay attention to. McDonald's suddenly shut down its corporate headquarters. I can walk from my home under 10 minutes, I'm in the McDonald's headquarters. They got a fabulous McDonald's there. They serve their food from all over the world. So if you wanted a burger the way they do it in, uh, let's say China, if they have them there, or uh, Europe, if they have them in Italy, it's all done that way. It's fascinating. But they have told that and other corporate offices to work from home as they are going to make major, major announcements now of layoffs. So here in the service sector, is the granddaddy boy saying they're going to do a lot of layoffs. I find that impressive. Now, the question is when the numbers come out on Wednesday, and that's when they're, did I spell W-E-D-N-E-S? I Wednesday spelled wrong. Um, when, when it comes out, that's what the market's going to look at. If this number doesn't wobble and just stays strong, then it's the same old thing. It's that the service sector going spring into summer, it will probably stay strong and away you go. I mentioned McDonald's because it is important. The timing of it's very important. Whether that'll come out by Wednesday, I don't know when they're gonna make their uh, major announcements. It will be fascinating to watch. Now, another thing that we're doing here. I did a special report on the US dollar. So if you're a currency trader and you, you want to learn my ideas on it, I did this. I did it over the weekend. My reports are only up three days. They're yours to go see on our website, irapstein.com, under the word research. You're going to see the comments that I have. You will see price count, something you rarely see, but I show them in this. It's, it's unique to the Lynn Group. Then you're going to get the more research, the 5, 15, 30-year historical charts. In other words, what does the market typically do? I will then go into the markets and I break down first in the futures basis, the weekly charts on the dollar index, then the daily. I put all the different studies, build them, and then I go to you uh, to the popular ETF on the dollar. So for everybody, there's something there and it's a big report. It's important. It will go off my website this Wednesday at midnight. Got the timing? By the way, I was going to do a live webinar this week, but with Good Friday coming up, it dawned on me. People travel, they go to family. I'm not going to do it. I'll do it next week. It's not that I don't want to do it. It's not that I don't have the time to do it. It dawned on me where we're at, and I just said, uh-uh, not a good time to be doing this. So we'll do that uh, a little bit later, okay? All right. So let's go back to the charts, if we could, here. And here they are. 
So it, it was an interesting day, a lot of markets in the red, but we had something in the uh, the green too. I like that AMC, I like that Amazon and that Apple are talking up first run movies, put them into movie theaters. My idea, guys, I've given you ideas on creating movies that are two hours long and putting an intermission. Now, why don't you two, and I'm talking Amazon and Apple, go and jointly buy one of the chains. Get a third party to run it for you, have your input in it, and take it over. Could be very interesting for your business model. In short, because people still want movies, all right, but why not really? Give them movies that you're producing, at least you'd have it. Doesn't mean you can't take in others that are outside of your production. You need them. But boom, away you go. Schlumberger, market gets a big boost. Why? Well, obviously, now the question is with what OPEC's doing, will that fuel demand in the United States to go back to fracking and the like? Could you think of a worse time when the banks have tightened credit? It's a pretty rough one. So I know it got the jump, but as traders started thinking about it, you could see how the market settled back on, in its range. The pattern is certainly bullish, higher and lows, higher high, until you get underneath 48.62, which was Friday's low. I think that the market's saying it's in that uptrend. Take that out, there's a problem. What stopped the market? the first challenge of the 100 day average. How many times do you hear me say, if you break, look for, if you've got a big moving average, that often stops the break. If you get a rally and you get another one up there, stops the rally. Then see where the Bollinger Bands combine with it. Down here, they came together. I'm very comfortable telling people, screaming at them, you gotta be out of the market. Now, could you've come out of the market even here and missed this? Yeah, so what? If you caught the play to that, you don't need the last penny. I know you think you do, but it's not how it works as a trader. And in this trade, same thing. You can go higher. You can believe that OPEC's going to do the million six. I don't. Not by a long shot, as I just told you. I think they'll be lucky if they end up with a net million barrel a day. But that's still very painful for the uh, countries, especially Europe. How do they fight inflation with that? Because prices are going to go up. So this just took in Europe and putting the Eurozone probably a half point cut very much back in play. I'm not saying it'll happen yet, but I am saying it's certainly back in play instead of just a quarter point. What else would I have screamed at you? So now you wanna tell me that it's gotten there, the million barrel plus, and it's gonna stay over the Bollinger Band. Remember what I told you, 95% of the time the market will trade within these bands. And the first time you hit it on the upside or the downside or where the pros lay in wait, to take money off the table. They build Vegas with the guys that think it's gonna go here and it's going up to the 75 right now. It may in time, but it won't do it typically on that type of pattern. Can it? Anything can happen. It's a game of probabilities. In Schwab, there's problems here. This market doesn't even bounce. The only good thing Schwab has going for it is a technician. I'm not saying the company. The company, I think, is a great company. They've got their problems with them having long-dated uh, instruments that they have to cash out if they get calls on it and so on. they got the same problems to a degree of what Sovereign and SVB had. Don't forget that, and that's why this market's punishing the stock. It might be going to 48.72, but it's already oversold and not embedded. That's the good news. I don't see what lifts it up. And even if it lifted, the Bollinger Band would be stiff resistance wherever it comes in. It will be under 63 when we reopen tomorrow. In UGA, this is the gasoline fund, and boy, I feel good. I have been here telling you I thought this market was gonna run. Like I just did in the dollar report, I did a gasoline report, that was the one before this, where I prepped you and I said, I think that we're now there. You've heard me say this in these tapes. Don't believe me. It's not about a track record. I know what I'm saying. It's not a track record. What it is, is I know what I say. If I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong, because I'm, I'm the original Swiss cheese guy. I mean, if you had holes that you could shoot in somebody that's been wrong, I'm probably that guy. But I'm also somebody that tries even, I, you know, I take the Prevagen, so I, I think I remember what I'm saying most of the time. And I'm kidding, of course, but I wouldn't mind taking it. But 
I, I was saying, I think we're finally at the point where we'll look back and we think this is the low in the spring, summer driving season is upon us. I didn't know OPEC. I had no idea OPEC was going to do what they're doing here. But I'm also telling you, you don't buy up or Bollinger Bands. It's where you take money off the table. It's just the beginning. The cars aren't on the road for the spring, se uh, summer season. This is the anticipation. I think the market will pull back. If it embeds, we'll treat it differently. We're not there yet. Tesla, great quarter, record amount of cars produced and the market punishes it because the analysts thought it should do more. That's how it works. You know, you could be right, you could be the best, but give me more, give me more. Created so many divorces, right? Well, market coming down, we'll see what 187.55, you're overbought. What stopped the rally? Hmm, I gotta think. What stopped this rally, Ira? Oh. Oh my God, what's the first time you hit the upper Bollinger Band? Friday. And that is exactly where you're gonna tell me it's gonna keep going, the numbers are gonna come out, and I'd be sitting there going, maybe you're right, maybe you can get to the 200 day, but what do I teach in my enhanced Bollinger Band course? If you've taken the course, you know what I just said, and here's the result of that, okay? XLF, okay, I'm impressed. Again, if you've taken the enhanced Bollinger Band course on our website, and if you come into this, how many times do I tell you that more times than not, by a lot, momentum will turn on a chart before price? Here you still have your embedded reading. You lose it. The odds now favor price and the 18-day average are going to come together right away before the market makes a low under these lows. I feel pretty good with that call. X, by the way, you know how I use that? What about when you're wrong? And I get wrong, I told you, I'm the Swiss cheese guy. But I use that because it'll tell me often before it gets worse, I am wrong this trade. Now you're gonna say, can you reverse and go long? And I told you I'm building a course, not a course, I'm building a, an advisory service for that. It'll be sometime in the summer if I can get it done in that period of time. There's some more research I want to do for variables as to how much risk to take. In other words, that stop at the bottom before I say, yes, you go in and what the percentage is. So we'll be doing that. It's right up on our hit parade right away coming up. Lower low, higher high, looking at the upper Bollinger Band. Okay, so what would I tell you on this number? You know what I'm gonna say. You're overbought, first time you're hitting the Bollinger Band. Frankly, this was the first resistance. Bollinger Band's a better resistance point, but money came off the table here, and today I think the pros dumped the rest of their position. You're gonna say, what? I'm gonna say, I think they dumped their position. There's no point in being long. You're not embedded. You've gotten to these two numbers. On pullbacks, I'd look for support, starting at the 100-day average. It seems to have stalled there, so it should be support on the way down, down to here. Are we trending? Not really. You've had a vertical price rise off the 200-day average. You do see that and you kicked up there. I mean, what were you gonna do? Throw a dart and say, that's my number to buy? I guess you could have, you know, some people do step in. I don't know if you're aware of that. And they'll, they'll say, hey, whenever a market first hits a 200 day up or on the downside, I'm going to use it if it falls to it to be a buyer and I'm gonna go short, but where do you come out? That becomes the big question. And where's your stop? Another question. Next we get to the uh, socks. Is it going to embed? So are the semiconductors going to get more bullish or not? Right now, I think the pro money is out of the market. They'll see if it embeds or correct. That's what I expect they're doing in houses. All right. We're in spring. And this is when I, I read the Chicago, I can tell you that. In Chicago, people want you to list your home because there's no supply. And I know people will say, well, they can't get a mortgage for it. Depends on the price range you're in. Some people in the more expensive homes, I mean, these are the cities, homes go million, two million, five million, ten million dollars. Um, those people 
sometimes don't need a mortgage, all right? And they're well connected if they do and they have other assets they can put up. The average person, no. So the average person buying a home, let's say from 250,000 up to 700,000, those are nice homes all over America, but you can't live in downtown Chicago for that kind of house. That, that's the point I'm making. You're not gonna get anything to buy a home in Manhattan. You'll have trouble in San Francisco. You'll have trouble in Los Angeles with that number. but other parts. We go to Indiana, it's going to buy a very beautiful home. So gives you just an idea as to what you've got. The question is what happens. But these are the home builders. These guys know the game. They're going to sit there. They're not buying, they're not building tracks of home right now. You want to come in, you're buying the individual home. They'll do it one-on-one. -on -one. I have a brother-in-law that's doing this exact thing right now in Florida. And that's how it works. And those builders are buried in work, absolutely buried in work. So don't think that they're not, they're doing quite well. Um, and I know that because I've, I've got family doing it right now. Higher lows, higher highs, okay. What do I think in the energy? I know you're gonna tell me it's going up here. And for me, I tell my client, okay, you're overbought you, today. You hit the Bollinger Band in the 100 day average, adios. GLD, okay, you either embed or you break. Which one of the two? It's just churning, it hasn't really gone anywhere, but it's still in a bullish configuration. Silver has the embedded reading. So the pullbacks in the market, I think are still getting bought by the pros. They'll bail if the red line closes under 79 and until then, no. And in copper, time to say so long. You're at the Bollinger Band, you're not embedded, wait, on breaks if it embeds, you got opportunity, but this is where I think the pros two days ago started coming out of this market. Now, TLT, BND, the market's gonna be looking at these to see, first, I think the big number is the service sector on Wednesday. That's what I think the market's gonna gear up on. We get a lot of Fed talk that starts again tomorrow, so the f different Fed members will come out, they'll give us their take. Bullard came out today talking about the energy, it is another headwind that the Fed has to fight because it's like a tax on the economy. But that could be a help. And you'll say, well, how could that be helpful? Number one, the Fed looks at core CPI, not headline CPI. Number two, when gasoline goes up too much, people back off from the driving. Don't you agree with that? That's like a tax. If they're not driving, they're not driving up the inflation. The gasoline goes there, but the consumption amounts can fall. Things to think about. It gets more complicated than it seems. UUP, as I just said, doing that special report for you, it's done. It's up there, irapstein.com. It's up here all the way through that. It's all you got to do is move your cursor up there. It'll take you right to the report. Report goes off the board three days on Wednesday. So I put this all together, try to come up with a game plan for everybody. Uh, the opposite will be true of FXC. If the dollar's going down, generally that's going up and you get a game plan. If you like these videos, do me a favor, the thumbs up. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a great evening. Take care.